This pickleball shot, if used sporadically, almost works every single time if you hit the right spot and disguise it correctly. So let's find out what it is right now. Pickleball lovers, don't forget to have a good day. There it is, that's a shot that's so effective. Jamie Onsen, senior pro, number one in my opinion in the world, just hit it. And we're gonna find out what to do, where to aim right now. Let me set up the situation of when you should hit this shot. You should hit this shot when you get a dead dink. But basically set it up with offensive dinks so you were patient, got a dead dink, your opponent is directly in front of you and you have a forehand. So this is what you do as an effective speed up once in a while, even if your opponent is quicker. Actually, probably hit it when your opponent is quicker because it's a really effective speed up if you surprise them. Now we execute the shot. It's a forehand flick at the right shoulder, extremely hard. When you hit this ball, it's going way out. Pro Mike Forrester hits the shot, but he does something wrong. Can you identify what he did? It has something to do about aiming. Right shoulder, not left, right? And the ball's going way out. We really want to handcuff our opponent. So if we hit it really hard, it's crossing that body, going straight here. I don't know the science behind it, but if we disguise that well, and I'll get to that, they almost hit it every time, and it's probably going out. We got to be ready for the next shot. But most of the times we hit this shot and either get a pop-up, they hit it out, or they don't hit it at all and we lose the point because we didn't disguise it correctly. So let me go into that. Mike Forrester pro does it perfect in this example near left-hand corner. And this is perfection. You have to try to do it in a red court. Just did it right. Right shoulder for a right-handed player. You go really hard. You try to hit them. And that's it. How do you make your forehand flick better? You disguise it more, less of a take back. And honestly, I think Mike can keep getting better if he disguises it a little better, but it does look like his forehand dink. When you see three, five pickleball players hit the flick, they give it away, right? If you give it away with any take back, it's not gonna work against five O players, or even four fives. That's the shot, a hard forehand flick crossing that body that's going way out, but we're hitting right here, and it's extremely tough for them to get out of the way, and they end up hitting it, and we do really well. Or it just hits that body because they're trying to duck, and they can't because we hit it really hard. Jamie Onsen, senior pro. This is him doing it perfect, right? Almost no take back at all. That's why he's so good. He has those fast twitch muscles in his wrist, and I'm gonna show you how to get them. Maybe you won't be that fast but look he set it up got a dead dink and again he's going at the right shoulder for right-handed player it handcuffs them you can hit a backhand roll at the same spot too jamie does it it's less of a percentage play you see more things go wrong but if you're that good like jamie it works right he's in trouble he's below the net and he goes straight at that right shoulder if you're a three five or four oh i would focus on the forehand flick how am I getting quicker so my forehand flick is effective in the 5-0 in pro division? I'm using this hand grip. So you see a lot of pros cup it. This is pure hypothesis moving forward, but it's what I've been working on and I'm getting quicker. You see J.W. Johnson almost cup that ball, following that ball into his paddle as his opponents hit it. I believe that's some type of grip pressure as he's cupping the ball. When he's about to speed up, grip pressure gone. His paddle head is almost touching the ground. Then he just regrips, right? Cup, let go, regrip. Cup, let go, regrip. And we can even come from the side of our body, flick it up, because we don't want to give it away like that. Because if we give this shot away, our opponents will just move out of the way, and then we're like, what the A? This is J.W. Johnson near left-hand corner. Watch him really follow that ball into his paddle. No take back. He hits it hard at his opponent's right shoulder. The ball will go way out right. And I'm going to show you this cupping. And I know you don't know what I mean, 
But take a look at this angle. Look at JW, far right hand corner, follow the ball into his paddle. He has some type of hand grip, right? And he can speed it up really quick. I think I'm on to something. Yeah. And I like these hand grips to practice getting quicker. When should you not hit this flick? You shouldn't hit this flick if you just hit this flick. It's a surprise shot meant to be used once in a while. After you hit this flick, I would recommend some off-speed change-ups because it really gets your opponent off balance. And that's a point of pickleball after all. You should hit this shot in high pressure situations when you have confidence because your opponent is just trying to get the ball in dinking and you can really surprise them. I don't know what it is, but people in high pressure situations seem to get tense and their reaction times seem to go down. So if we can stay loose and hit this shot in a big pressure situation by not giving it away, staying loose and being a champ, I would do it. Pickleball lovers, do you hit this flick and do you hit this spot? Do you hit it really hard? Do you try to win the point? What do you do? Leave it in comments, maybe I'm wrong, and don't forget to have a good day.